those of you who don't know, this is producer Michael. Producer Michael is a legend in this community, an old school legend. He is, I think, a producer. Not entirely certain as to what he really does. I think he produces things, but what he produces for the most part nowadays is like these fanciful productions of wealthy people's houses and stuff. The most famous video from producer Michael that led to the most amount of Hasanabi lore and actually became a meme entirely online was the one house, which is, hold on, I'm going to pull this out right now. Here it is. Nobody needs this much house. 731,000 like views. This is his most excellent work, in my opinion. Here he is back at it again inside the most luxurious police department in the USA. <laughs> Oh, dude, what an intro. Ah, producer Michael jump scare. I guess it's not so much as a jump scare. You know what you're going to get when you click on the video, right? I mean, what you see is what you get. Do you still comment on true crime sometimes? Yes, I did like a whole cop watch thing the other day with, you know, police officers getting seduced by suspects. Today, we've got something really, really special for you. We are going to show you the world's most luxurious police department. We're here in Beverly Hills, and I'm sure everybody knows they found the only cop that's in shape i swear to god he's doing pr for the beverly hills police department which notoriously is famous for setting up actual blockades during the Rodney king stuff that partitioned off beverly hills from the rest of the city to ensure that like none of the chaos actually came into beverly hills down for you know high end but this takes things to a whole nother level and we're here with sergeant newman Mike, great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Oh, Look at him, dude. He's got the horseshoe and everything, bro. This is copaganda. First and foremost, let me explain to you something. This is copaganda. To the most luxurious police department in all the world. <laughs> These guys are just amazing. I, I am. Um... More fun facts. The LAPD, the Los Angeles Police Department, spends, I think, it, what is it, $8 million a day? Their overall budget is like $3 billion. They are incredibly spoiled, entitled. They are dog. They don't do their jobs. Beverly Hills Police Department is no different. The Sheriff's Department in Los Angeles also has its own gangs. I haven't seen this video yet. I haven't pre-watched, but I do feel like this video is going to leave many of us thinking, perhaps maybe we should defund the police after all. Let's take a look. So blessed to be able to live in this city with a police department that, that takes great care of us. I think you have the fastest response time of any police department, right? Yeah, because it's a rich neighborhood. That's why. So our emergency response time on average is below three minutes. So I don't know if it's the fastest in the entire world. Certainly fastest in Los Angeles. That's probably for real. For real, for real. Sure That's pretty fast. <laughs> so what are we going to get to see today? So we're going to take you behind the scenes. I know you live in the city. You get to see what the police department does a lot. But we want to take you behind the scenes and kind of show you the inner workings of the police department. What do you say we maybe go to the shooting range, go to the jail, maybe see our technology of the real-time watch center, and see just why this department is the best in the world. Let's do it. Entrance to the jail. So a couple things. I don't know if you guys have any weapons on you. Does anybody have any weapons? I I've got a machine so, gun oh, and uh, no. I was expecting you to say you have two guns right here. Oh, producer Michael's boy. Ooh, he said, yo, what's up? Got the switchblade on me. I always keep that thing on me. You know what I'm saying? Cameraman coming in hot. He's like, yeah, I do have a weapon, actually, officer. Sorry, let me... Oh, oh, this is a service weapon that I took off of you, but it's fine, I guess, you know? Here you go. That's not a big deal. He came gat it up. So there's a couple things that we can't bring in the jail. Weapons like knives, guns, etc. but like a taser. Can we taste somebody? You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> insane. You are a freak producer. He said, can we tase somebody? Brother, that is crazy, okay? Least violent American. Okay, the thing is, he's not even American, as implied by his accent. Why did he go full American here? See you later on, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we get somebody to volunteer to take it. Okay, maybe he's based and he wants to tase a cop, a bubby. Alright, you wanna go to jail? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest I've ever had to do that. Wow. <laughs> this is the main jail Hi. floor. I got you. Oh my God, dude. Oh my Lord. This is very dystopian. Yes. At least they know they're like the bad guys, right? Aren't the minions bad guys? Hope this is the only time I meet you guys. Taylor and Mora. Welcome. I'm joking. You. This is the finger. I'm joking. Machine, just, uh, what it is. No, I do plan on coming back. Yo, you should be arrested for this fit okay what you are wearing currently is a fashion crime you are a fashion felon do you understand they should be arresting your ass for wearing whatever Dan flashes that shirt that is with the flames on the blazer. On this side, we have what we would call like the intoxication cell. So you can tell, first off, it echoes nicely inside of here, but they have a, uh, 
a padded floor. Oh wow! So when somebody is unable to, yeah, if someone is uh, intoxicated, where we need to watch them a little bit more, this Drunk is tank. one of the places where we can do that. Uh, we can even put something on the ground for them if they want to sleep here. What's that? That's so funny. The floor is padded, except they literally have this like brick right here next to the toilet, so you can still trip, fall, and hit your head directly on this corner and die. It's a uh, lovely. It's not a swan toilet. <laughs> Would this be the wrong time to do a swan toilet integration? Yeah, right. It would be the <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And then we have two. Uh, why, why is the floor like this? Because drunk people won't bang their head if they fall over. Oh, yes. okay. We're hiring. Yeah, so. I, I, duh. But also, doesn't matter because there's still plenty of uh, things that they can bang their heads on in there oh, on accident. Him. By the way, luxury. This is the most luxurious police department. The most luxurious police department in the United States of America is still so bad. Like, in comparison to the worst Norwegian prison, America's best prison still looks like a. Uh, we can process many people through this facility and part of that is to have them restrained if need be. Put that handcuff on even if you'd like uh, because I do have a key. Well, is it the right size? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're all the right one size. size fits I, most. I have a B. Maybe it's most heavy. I know. The bottom one. The bottom so, one. No, no. Go down one. One there. There you go. go. I have some experience putting these on. There we go. Put it right, on. You ready? Let's, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's go. Right. Do you want to be See you later, Michael. You're arrested for that fit, dog. You are arrested for that fit. This is not comfortable. No, they're not made for comfort. They are metal around your wrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not ideal. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. Didn't realize that. He's like, wow, just found out being arrested, not comfortable. Has it ever been full? Uh, I don't know if it's been full full because we did have one time we arrested a lot of people during a uh, 2020 during the protests and civil unrest. I'm sure. convinced this is the most in shape cop. Like this is the guy that they have on for PR purposes because he's like the most in shape cop, right? It has to be, right? What are these? This is some storage That's a gurney. Stuff. So the gurney on the right was the old way what we would have in a Bro, the spooky music is actually fitting the vibes all of a sudden. Like I would rather have it be spooky music than cheery music where he's like talking about like apprehending people and detaining them days on end sometimes and, and being like, oh, this is not comfortable. This chair here is a, a more secure way. So someone can sit here, get comp Bro, what the f I thought he was going to show the, like, go-kart one. That one is way worse. They were like, hey, we found an even worse way to f apprehend people. That looks like a torture chair, man. We strapped in, and you can live like a wheelbarrow. <laughs> well, and pull someone wherever you need to go. And the advantage with this is... This is, the, this is the torture chair where we put mentally ill people that we apprehended. We'd sit them in this chair, have someone come, and they can't move their arm at all and they can extract that blood if need be, usually Whoa. by a search warrant. <laughs> usually via search warrant, implying that sometimes not a search warrant? Like what the f God, we are so crazy. Wait, can they forcefully extract blood? Yes, the fun tone, the cheery tone that he is taking is a clear juxtaposition to the torturous conditions that he is presenting here. So you first, you would thing, put though. them in this thing called the wrap system. So the wrap is, uh, I, I like to call it the human burrito, uh, but essentially- <laughs> Oh, damn, I thought that other Wheelbarrow looking one was at least like kind of cool. Turns out, no, they wrap you like Hannibal Lecter. Jesus this is Christ. Over your legs and then actually will wrap your legs, this portion here, and you strap those in. So we actually would have somebody see knees here. You'd actually put the suspect's knees there and wrap their legs. Now you take this portion, which is almost like a, a glorified shoulder harness. And yeah, cops are not the smartest people. So they, they're like, you need this. Trust me, Michael, believe me, a lot of cops need this, uh, this level of, of handholding. The you know, stupid proof from there, this part would go over them and they get connected to this and you actually sit in an L and it's strapped to where you can't move. You can't do anything it's like a straight jacket. And it's almost like a hammock because <laughs> you're not going to get hurt. You can't right. hurt yourself. And even if you try to bang your head on something, we have that helmet. So we can actually take this, throw that under the suspect. This is literally man-made horrors beyond comprehension in full display. This is a torture mechanism for mentally ill people that they've apprehended violently. Instead of one person, we could use this to house numerous people. A family. <laughs> Usually we don't have families, but yeah, I guess. It Why is he laughing? Oh my God. Good. 
So this is the same thing if you look when we go on. They used a fake study to claim safety claims for the body restraint used by U.S. authorities based on disputed study. Oh, um, of course, ICE uses it. Wrap device used by ICE says it can be used without restricting breathing, but investigation shows claim based on anecdotes. Wow. Safety claims made by the manu manufacturer of a full body restraint used by more than 1,500 authorities across the U.S. are largely based on anecdotal evidence and one disputed study. An investigation by Capital in Maine is found. The wrap device is used by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. For the record, what is used on undocumented migrants, what is tested on them will inevitably be used on natural born U.S. citizens as well. This is how it works. First, we test out the weapons on Iraqis. Then we use it on undocumented immigrants in this country, which have no laws, obviously. We do, but we just don't abide by them. And then inevitably, we use it on everyone else. This is the turnstile of fascism, I would say. Very cool. Very nice. Uh, seems normal. Okay, let's continue. And so <laughs> what kind of thing would you come in? Like if you had a three-day sentence, yeah. what would that be for? I mean, it could be for a lot of different lower-level crimes. And then I wonder if that cop uses steroids. One hundo P. Fun fact, but a lot of cops use steroids. People don't know that, I guess, and are shocked when they find out. If you see an in-shape cop, definitely a steroid user. But let me tell you. Definitely not subscribe to the Hassan Abbey broadcast. So if he's in here, he is going to be seeing a three minute break at the top of the hour. I don't really have a good segue. Right. You imagine your worst day, your heart's pounding, you're, you're nervous, your fine motor skills are going, and now you're asked to hit a target that's far away. And people will say, why don't you shoot the gun out of his hand? Or why don't you shoot the knife out of their hand? <laughs> It's hard to do even when you're not nervous. The active hit rate for like every goddamn police department in this country is abysmally bad. Like in an active shooting scenario, oh my God, <laughs> not great, okay? Yeah, when you're nervous, like an acorn falls on your cop car and you think that the suspect that you apprehended and put inside of your cop car has a suppressed weapon. Amazing, yeah, it's just a tough job. Very, very tough job. People don't realize what police officers actually do. When, when you approach it's a car, you pull yeah. a car over speeding, you have no idea who's in that car. Oh, dude, he is so Amerabrained. He is so Americanized. Yeah, 17th most deadly profession. Not even cracking the top 20, I believe, but with COVID deaths, maybe it does. So this was an original taser, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a, one of the very, very first tasers uh, that they ever created. Why does it have an antenna? I don't know what happened in the past to make them need an antenna, but what I can tell you is the new ones, the Taser 10, which we have now, this thing is just leap years ahead of this now. Is my a hashtag F for tasers? What the hell? And you wouldn't listen to commands, and the officers use this Taser 10, this brand new device that only a few agencies have in the country, and we're able to stop him with like five or six of these darts. But one of them finally got the connection and he just locks up, falls. We got the knife away from him and we're able to resolve that essentially without anyone getting hurt. Uh, but imagine how different it could be if we didn't have this or it fails. It is pretty wild that, that like, he's so giddy talking about tasing people. Yeah, there are going to be moments where like you would definitely rather have a taser than not, but like incredibly rare moments, you know what I mean? Everything he's talking about, even the apprehender, like the autistic teenager apprehender that he was showing, like there will be an extreme scenario where that where that is a necessity. But knowing how police operate in the United States of America, they're using that way, way, way easier than than an actually necessary it's the same principle behind like police existing like obviously there needs to be a force that is maintaining the presence of law and order something that i bring up all the time it's just that the way that we have it set up it doesn't do that at all and it does it in the exact opposite direction and it's doing the lawlessness and disorder oh my god it's so bad and then you think about all the other places on the world around the world where there are like larger problems with knife crime than the united states of america even even though we do have a massive amount of knife crime that occurs here as well despite the fact that we also have guns and the way that they use way more antiquated methods human catchers like in japan they have that one like weird pitchfork thing that's like a man catcher shield walls that like come in on people like they are still infinitely better than mag dumping into a person with with a taser before we pass through these doors you can see the sign that was created to kind of highlight the courage that the men and women of this police department uh, takes every day when they step through this door. I think like the reason why people receive this, what I consider to be like 
gross propaganda. People receive it in a way more positive light is because like in their minds, they're thinking about the worst possible scenario. They're not thinking about like the most common scenario, which is like the day-to-day -day interactions where police often escalate through violent means when they don't need to at all. They're simply thinking about the worst possible scenario where you have like a serial rapist mass beheader that cops have to bravely apprehend while he's doing serial rapist mass murderer decapitations or something like in the scene of the crime so that's like the issue here whenever you talk about like cop you're not thinking about like literally when they do this kind of stuff which is objectively not in the scenarios that serial mass rapist murder decapitation going on but instead just like a dude having a bad day you know what i mean oh gosh <laughs> Your favorite. So down here, this is what we call A-level. A-level is our parking garage. So not as cool as your latest. The most effective propaganda I've ever seen is not like this, but the Broward County Police Department, I forget, I think it was Broward County. They apparently seize cars and they slap on like a seized asset sticker on the side of it. And they will give like dudes Hellcats and which is definitely not something that you should do regardless. Like, we need to be doing less police chases in this country because they're very, very deadly. Yeah, they apparently do civil asset forfeiture from people who have, like, stolen cars or whatever, or whoever they've, like, gotten it from, maybe, like, a drug bust or whatever, right? They literally slap the lights on them and use those actual cars to chase suspects in like Grand Theft Auto situations or like in high speed police chases, which definitely does look cool, I hate to admit, but is also phenomenally dangerous and should not exist at all. Yeah, look, see, this is what I mean. Florida Sheriff Office shows their Corvette Z6 was reportedly seized from drug dealer. There was a TikTok that I watched that went viral a while back where it was like a, like a Broward County Sheriff's Office guy who literally had suspect that they had apprehended standing next to the car that they had apprehended him in doing like a post-game interview basically which was really dehumanizing really awful it's a conflicting set of circumstances because on the one hand i'm like this does objectively look kind of cool but on the other hand i'm like this dude is just like perp walking this guy he just treats him like not human you know what i mean pretty brand new you have an old school display here with your uh, different speedometer, tachometer, and then you look on the other one to the left, it's all electronic screens now. So the, the motor officers can't be a brand new officer because they have to know the streets. There's no GPS on this. Right. They have to know how to use the radio. They have to know basic police work because they're on their own. There is no partner with them. So our motor officers are even more uh, sometimes standoffish, <laughs> as we talked about, because they have to be. They're by themselves, alone and unafraid. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of like mass murderers with heavy weaponry roaming the streets of Beverly hills like you'd think he's talking about a war zone okay yeah they have to be more standoffish because they're alone it's like dude you are literally stopping a person for a like a seatbelt violation what do you mean standoffish yeah dude you'd never know an rpg that they're gonna pull out of their car he's acting like they're patrolling the streets of el salvador or like cape town or something okay it's just like it doesn't make sense there you go yeah look at that christmas <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're just at the lights, so you know you switch to the Christmas lights, but if you just do one, it's gonna turn on just a forward facing uh, and you see the back is on. And so this is nice, because at night, you don't want, if you're standing next to the car as an officer, you can already see his face is kind of lighting up. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, when, it's, and it's bright. It's bright. But when you turn on all three, which you can switch one more, you see it's even more brightness. Yeah. There's a reason why it's so difficult to go against propaganda because it's just like so permanently rewired our brains in America, especially due to like TV and stuff. It's just like, dude, UPS delivery drivers have an infinitely more difficult and infinitely more dangerous job than police officers and that is objectively true you cannot go against that delivery drivers have a more dangerous job than policing okay nurses have a more dangerous job than policing like so many professions before you arrive at cops that is uh objectively as dangerous you can say oh boy all you want it's factually inaccurate landscapers have a more dangerous job than policing in none of those jobs that i just mentioned do you get to kill someone because you're having a 
bad day or because you felt scared. There are statistics for this. Like a lot of people think that on the line duty deaths are happening due to police consistently finding themselves in like a gunfight or something in, in gun battles. That's not true. Number one, fatal injury rate is 111 per 100,000 workers is logging workers, aircraft pilots and flight engineers, derrick operators in oil, gas and mining, roofers, garbage collectors, iron workers, delivery drivers, farmers, firefighting supervisors, power linemen. That's why they got bucket bunnies, agricultural workers, crossing guards, crane operators, construction helpers, landscaping supervisors, highway maintenance workers, cement masons, small agent mechanics, supervisors of mechanics, heavy vehicle mechanics, ground maintenance workers. Number 22 is police officers. One thing you have to remember, the number one killer of cops, it's actually COVID. <laughs> Ironically, for the past three years in the making, since COVID started, it has been COVID because they were just refusing to get vaccinated and they're very fat. I think it might still be COVID. I don't know if it's still COVID, but it was. A lot of people think that cops are like dying on the line when the on the line duty deaths, if you actually look into it, one used to feature canine units, first of all, which is, I guess, kind of ridiculous. Traffic fatalities when a cop is driving like a Okay. And heart failure. I didn't give you like by likelihood of it happening. I don't know what the, I, I can't remember what the exact ones are off the top of my head, but it doesn't even break the top 20. So it's something to think about. These are per capita numbers, by the way. Do you believe that we can live in a society without police? What's the solution as a person that lives in Portland or, and are dealing with the protests that happened a few years ago and seeing the aftermath of the situation, I'm conflicted. Wait, what? I am not pro police abolition. A lot of anarchists get mad at me for saying this, but I understand structurally the necessity for an institution, whether it is democratically organized or not, right? Upholding democratically voted on justifiable hierarchies or not, some mechanism for one, solving crime, and also two, perhaps more importantly, not more importantly, but more commonly, a unit that maintains the presence of law and order. It's just that in the United States of America or just under global capitalist organization of the economy, most cops do not do that. They are not actually maintaining a presence of law and order. As a matter of fact, depending on how much money you make and what neighborhood you're in, they're oftentimes creating lawlessness and disorder. A law is not a law if not possible to enforce. Any law has consequences when breaking it inherently. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a necessity for, for like making it seem like there is a, you know, someone out there when push comes to shove that will help you. Problem is cops don't really do that. That's the issue. They should, but they don't. Civil society requires the state to have a monopoly over violence. The issue is that the fact that the institution is capital oriented and not community oriented, thank you. Really, you're noticing a whole technological aspect to the brand new cameras, brand new tasers, star chase to stop cars and from going in pursuit. So what's this enormous siren? So this is my boom box whenever I want to play music on the street. No, uh, this is the, the LRAD. And the that, by the way, is a long range acoustic device that was first utilized in Iraq, which is exactly what I was talking about. Now it's like commonplace. It is a long range acoustic device that is supposed to, you know, disperse crowds. OK, he will probably present it as though it's just a simple PA, but a little bit more powerful or he'll use terms like, you know, civil disturbances. The reality is, is a torture mechanism that originally was utilized in Iraq and is now being utilized domestically. This is being held by somebody. They have the rifle, they have all the vest, the extra layer of armor they wear to keep them safe. So they do have to stay in good shape. That's why they're required every year to go through physical fitness assessments to make sure they can do it. Yeah, dude. Famously, cops are always going through physical assessments. I guess like if you're a SWAT guy, maybe. I wonder why the PR guy for the Beverly Hills Police Department is so jacked talking about Physical assessments is like this is the only cop I've ever seen that's fit. So on um, this, all, all these systems are, you know, and they have to learn all this. Anything about the training timeline for an officer it takes it takes a long time. To train an officer to be ready to go out on their own. Dispatch has to do almost a year long process, if not longer, to learn. They got to learn. <laughs> it's so funny that dispatch is trained more than a cop. Like in the same precinct all of a sudden you literally on accident find people that literally have to be more trained than the cops i doubt that they are also paid evenly or adequately so i have an, an app on my phone it's bhp alerts yes and it will say uh, investigation going on on crescent drive yes uh, and then three minutes later it'll say robbery uh, robbery investigation or something and then three minutes later 
suspect apprehended. Yes. I'm willing to bet they made that app because they saw that like those neighborhood apps that pop off led to probably increasingly positive police, pro police sentiment. So they made their own app. It's great marketing. There's literally nothing better as far as marketing than Nextdoor and all of those other apps that are constantly projecting like whatever cr minor crime that people suspect is a major crime half the time is occurring it in is cool though no it's not those apps are terrible dude i'm a firm believer that like the mass adoption of apps like that have caused people to think that like the crime panic is greater than it actually is two things that you have to remember crime is a constant in a city you don't need to have that blasted in your face non-stop it's a constant it's happening all the time all around us okay it's happening literally wherever you are there's definitely crime happening possibly very close to you the issue is however when you have apps like next door and all the all those like weird apps it's blasting it to your face all the time and it's also used by the most neurotic individuals who are not going to accurately report it anyway even if you are living in a city it creates the sense that like there is so much more crime occurring than you actually think so even if it was like adequately reporting all the crimes that are happening it would still make you paranoid but it's even worse because it's not just real crime occurring in real time it's literally people suspecting that crime is occurring and reporting it as such hi i don't want to shake your hand because i might get my arm ripped off oh, right no he's very good friendly good boy can i stroke him absolutely hi you have a good pet can I stroke him? Jesus Christ, dude. British people are crazy. It's so sad that this is one of the cutest aspects, and it's literally one of the most unconstitutional worst aspects of policing. It is one of the least constitutional aspects of policing, is that the canine units in general are specifically there to unlawfully search your car and oftentimes seize you. They have a 87% failure rate or something. It's crazy. Their entire job is to be like, oh, this dog that I've trained to tap that will give me constitutional fake constitutional uh, legal grounds in searching your vehicle has done the thing. That dog that he's petting, this beautiful Belgian Malinois that he's petting is a Fourth Amendment loophole. That's all this is. And did you train him? Uh, so we typically will get them trained, but we train with them pretty much weekly, uh, if not daily. Um, to make sure that they stay up on all the skill sets that we need them for. If you're a canine unit, you have to train your dog. That's just how dogs are. You have to consistently keep training it. Even if you didn't do the initial training, you still have to toy, keep training. Toy, right? Yes. And he'll do anything for his toy? Within reason, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and within reason means apprehending suspects and explosives. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, anyway. That's pretty heavy duty. This is propaganda, and it works on me. I'm not even kidding. As soon as I see a dog like that, I'm like, I drop everything, okay?